Hello lovelies, I'm back. This is Kimberly Purpose and welcome to my channel. Um, today I want to do another video about Cheddar Man. That's right, I want to do a video about Cheddar Man. Sorry about that, I had to put my speaker on. Hopefully y'all can hear me a lot better. <laughs> I know I'm late on doing this video because this was posted on The Guardian on February the 7th, but I wanted to do a video on it because you know, this is really excellent research. Um, yes, I'm really excited about it. It's about Chatterman in Britain. It says the first modern Briton had dark to black skin. Chatterman DNA analysis reveals the genome, the genome of Chatterman who lived 10,000 years ago suggests that he had blue eyes, dark skin, and dark curly hair. Okay, I was trying to see who, um, that's the title and the subtitle, I believe. I'm not sure who the author is. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, here it is. It's Hannah Devlin, and she's the science um, correspondent right here. This, uh, see, it's a lot of <laughs> people who already posted, uh, look to their social media. It's already over 200,000. So this is uh, great, interesting news here. This type of research shows and proves that the dark copper colored skin, bronze colored skin people, the people of color were the first world travelers. And we actually traveled the world. We moved from Africa to globally. And so this shows even further evidence that we were um, the original people here on this planet. And according to this, um, which is great news, you know, <laughs> I think so. And it says here, here's the statue right here of the uh, the model of the bones that they found in um, the chat. Uh, chat, I think it was Chatter Mountains or something like that. Don't take my word for it. I think I... Um, I'm gonna play the other video so y'all can see it, see where it's from. But I thought it said they said the uh, chatter, so a region and called chatter. But I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> I'm gonna play the video and let in depth, and you know you can know exactly where the bones were found. But um, underneath the picture it says a forensic reconstruction of chatter man head based on the new DNA evidence and his fossil skeletons. And uh, this came from Channel 4. Wow. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Wow. Let's read. It says, the first modern Brit who lived about 10,000 years ago had dark to black skin. A ground groundbreaking DNA analysis of Britain's oldest complete skeleton has revealed the fossils known as Chatterman was unearthed more than a century ago in ghost caves in Somerset. Somerset, I'm sorry, Somerset. Intense speculation was built up around Chatterman's origins and appearance because he lived shortly after his first settlers, after the first settlers crossed from continental. Europe to Britain at the end of the last ice age. People of white British, well, gray British ancestry live today are descendants of this population. It was initially assumed that Chatterman had pale skin and fair hair, but his DNA paints a different picture. Strongly suggests he had blue eyes, a de very dark brown to black complexion, and dark curly hair. I find that interesting with the blue eyes. I wonder how they could prove that, I guess, through the DNA test. The only thing is with this uh, picture, if he had curly hair, it this don't look curly. This still looks sort of straight. It still look like Caucasian hair. You know, if it's curly, I would think it would be more woven and curly like true um, copper colored people, bronze colored people. You know, of African descent, they will have curlier hair than this. They, you know, I, 
I would think they would put an afro or something. <laughs> curl. No, you would think of that if you're talking about curls, but that's that's not curly. That's sort of straight, straight to wavy and look more more like um Caucasian hair. But anyway, and that I just you know noticed that. And I was just wondering how they know whether or not his eyes were blue. I guess they had the technology, I'm not sure, to pull the DNA from the remains to tell whether or not a person has blue eyes. And I just found that a little interesting. I'm not sure they his eyes were really, really blue or they want to feel better about, you know, putting a dark colored person up there to have some sort of resemblance to themselves. I'm not sure. Hopefully it's true. It's from DNA. But the hair, that needs to be curlier. Uh, I would think if it's curly, curly is curly. That's more straight to wavy. But anyway, um, the discovery shows that the genes for lighter skin became widespread in Europe population far later than originally thought. That's true. They said the, they said the bones were found at the tail end of the ice age. I was looking at that. Wait, here it is. Settlers crossed the continent of Europe to Britain at the end of the Ice Age. That's when the settlers uh, came in. And I guess intense escalation was built around Chatter's origins and appearance because he lived shortly after the first settlers. So he came at the... Okay, so he was in that region when the settlers first came. So that was at the end of the Ice Age. So that were uh, dark colored skin people there at the end of the ice age. See, so that means that you know they were already we were already already there. Our, you know the copper colored races were already there. So and they I guess they thought that it came sooner, right before, right around the beginning of the ice age. So this means that the lighter skin came later. It says discovery showed that genes for lighter skin became widespread in Europe population far later than originally thought. So that means European great cockazoids came here a lot later. Make you wonder how on earth did they get here then? If they came after the Ice Age. As I always thought, me personally, you know, I always thought assumed that they came right around the beginning of the Ice Age because of their fair skin, you know, being know fair skin but obviously that's not true if they're determining that Europeans came much later uh, the, the great Caucasians but anyway and the skin color was not always pro uh, proxy for geographic origins in the way it is often seen to be today yeah because it create this class system and make it that way it's never intended to be that way but well, no, but the Great Caucasians created this when slave trade came. But anyway, let's look at this. This is a map. I guess this is where they found him at the remains. It says George, uh, Chatter George, Chatter Gorge, right here. I guess this is where they found him at. Interesting. This is very interesting. And it says here. Tom Booth, an organist, uh, arche I'm sorry, get Tom tied. Tom Booth, an archaeologist at the Natural History Museum, who worked on the project, said it really shows up that these Im imaginary racial categories that we have are all are, are really very modern constructions. See, that's what I was saying. I said, you know, this this modeling of race and everything was created uh, recently. I would say. Specifically for the slave trade. That's the only reason why they created it in the first place. To justify slavery. Um, because it was not in existence in the past. Prior to the Great Caucasians um, circulating and populating you know, the earth. After, of course, the copper colored races of African descent populated the earth first. We were the first and original. So they came later. And this construct did not come into existence until they started going around um, traveling the um, planet, you know, and in more, more, more modern times, you know, later times. So it made sense. 
And this was just created by great Caucasoids. This cl class system and trying to put people in categories and all that. It says here it is in this labeling system. It really shows up in this imaginary racial category. See, and I had to read that again, y'all, that we are really very modern constructions, a very recent construction that really are not applicable to the past at all. It, it wasn't applicable because they didn't have that kind of racist or biasness that was created uh, in modern time because of slavery and the, the um, trying to create this um, caste system to keep certain groups of people apart according to skin color or so to say and trying to keep the narrative going of the slave days in some 16 17 1800 so i, I would assume that it happened during the time of slavery when they created this all these crazy uh, you no know, 14 15 1600s around that time but well, i'm glad they're starting to say that but let's continue and uh, very recent uh it'd be interesting to know how recent they started um noticing you know these modern constructs you know i would think around the 14 1500s but i might be wrong it might be even sooner than that but or uh, right when Caucasians start great you know traveling the um traveling the world i think that's when it occurred but let's continue it says joan Dickman a Com computational biologist of um, University of College London and another member of the project team agreed saying that the connection often drawn between British and whites was not an immutable, immutable tr uh, truth. It has always changed and will change. Exactly. The findings were revealed in the head of Channel 4 documentary, which tracked the ancient DNA projects at the Natural History Museum in London, as well as creating a new forensic reconstruction of Chatterman's head. Wow. I'm, I'm just I'm fascinated. I'm glad that there are some scientists that actually comes out and tells some you know at least part most of the truth some of it you know need more truthful people you know telling the truth about history instead of lying at least they bringing this to light and this is perfect time around history month you know black history month here in america's but anyway the result pointed to the middle east origin of china man suggesting that his history would have left Africa, moved to the Middle East, and later headed west into Europe before eventually crossing the ancient land bridge called Doggerland, which connects Britain to continental Europe. Today, about 10% of white British ancestors linked to this ancient population. Wow, that's interesting. I never heard of Dargo Land. I'm gonna have to look into that. Interesting. Dargo Land. But let's continue. It says the analysis also ruled out an ancestral link with individuals inhabiting Gulf, um, Gulf, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that, Gulf caves <laughs> 5,000 years earlier, who appear to have performed grisly cannibalistic rituals ooh that don't sound all that great it says <laughs> it says a cave wait a second including gnawing on human toes and fingers possibly after boiling them and drinking from polished skull cups ooh that is gross I wonder if this is the Neanderthals ooh 5,000 yeah the humans who appeared to have grisled Goff's case 5,000 years earlier. Hmm. That is, yuck. That's gross. But let's continue. They said some cannibalism uh, going on in there. It's, it says, um, says 5,000 years earlier. I'm not sure what they mean by that. But let's continue. It doesn't say, Okay, let's continue. It says, Britain was uh, periodically settled and cleared during the Ice Age um, until the end of the last glacial 
period about 11,700 years ago. Since then, when it has been continuously inhabited, until now, it has been clear whether each wave of migrants was seeded from the same population in mainland Europe. The la latest results suggest that this was not the case. It's a lot of stuff. Unless until now, it's been clear that whether waves of migrants was seeded from the same population in mainland Europe, the last latest results suggest not the case. Wow. I guess all this research is changing the way history is. It's always... You know, I guess as you learn more, things change. But it says here, the team homes in one genes known as linked to skin color, hair color, and texture and eye color. For skin tones, there are a handful of genetic variants linked to reduced pigmentation, including some that are very widespread to European populations today. However, Chatterman had ancestral versions of all genes strongly suggest that we would have been dark to black skin tone, but combined with blue eyes. It's a team who knows. Also, I don't know how they came up with the eye color. That would be interesting to get more information about it. But anyway, it says here the scientists believe the populations living in Europe became light skin over time because pale skin absorbs more sunlight, which is required to produce enough vitamin D. The latest findings suggest pale skin may have emerged later, possibly when the event of farming meant people were obtaining less vitamin D through dietary source like oily fish. Cheddarman would have lived a hunter-gatherer lifestyle, making sharp blades from flint from butchering animals, usually antlers, to whistle harpoons for spear fishing and carving bows and arrows. Yeah, okay, this is a good, an interesting article. Very interesting. Um, I just find it amazing that the more, um, genetics come out, genetic research and being able to track DNA, the more the truth starts to come out. But anyway, listen, this show, I'm going to show you the video. Um, I'm going to go to this side. I'll record this whole video again, but please like this video and thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and till next time. Peace, family, and be blessed. And also, don't forget to follow me on Black Junction TV. I have a Facebook page. Please join and like. I also have a community on Facebook as well. And I am pay I'm on PayPal, Patreon, and also I'm on GoFundMe. Until next time, peace and be blessed. Bye-bye.